Good afternoon from Disney's Grand Floridian. We are here today because it is officially halfway to Halloween. And to celebrate, Disney has announced that they're gonna be doing a few special offerings that are Halloween like themed at this time of year. So we're gonna be going to the three monorail resorts. We're gonna to go to the Grand Floridian, the Contemporary and the Polynesian. And we're gonna be trying some Halloween treats. It is halfway to Halloween. It is April 20th. And these treats are only available from April 20th through April 23rd. So we have a limited time to try them. That's why we're here today on April 20th to try them. I'm very excited because I love Halloween, love treats, and I love these resorts. So let's head into the Grand Floridian. And the first place that we're gonna stop off at is Gasparilla's Island Grill. Two things that I definitely love seeing at the Grand Floridian are this right here, this Cadillac and this carriage. This carriage is often used for weddings at the Grand Floridian. So if you're getting married, you could like show up in a horse-drawn carriage. I don't know if they ever use the Cadillac for anything other than just kind of sitting here looking pretty. And boy, does it. Look at the size of these headlights. They're so gigantic. A V8. I'd love to see the engine on this thing. I'd like to know what year it is as well. It feels, oh no, it's got like Ziplocs on it. What's going on here? It feels like a 1940s or something like that. I'd have to look it up and see. I wonder if it says anywhere on the back or anything like that. Look at the size of this back seat. Look at how much room there is. Wow. And the trunk. That's pretty interesting right there because this is an external trunk. And that tells me that the reason that they call it a trunk is because it used to actually be like a luggage trunk that you would strap to the outside of the car. And then eventually they started building them specific for the car and then they would just incorporate them into the car. It was a simpler time. They had ashtrays right there on the dashboard. It's got a radio, so it can't be that old. It's got an AM radio. Oh wait, it's got an AM FM radio. Ooh, what that would, that would put it in a very specific age, wouldn't it? But also I feel like there are some other things on this car that kind of are updates. Like take for instance, disc brakes on the front. That wasn't common, right? So I think that maybe this is, oh, it's a 1929 Cadillac. That's what it says. I feel like they didn't use disc brakes in the twenties, but I could be wrong. You never know. I'm not, I know of cars. I don't know a lot about them. Here we are heading into the Grand Floridian. They're celebrating spring with this beautiful flower arrangement. It smells so good in here. Feels good too. The air conditioning is really kicking and I am thankful for that because it's very hot outside right now. Also, should be noted that at the Grand Floridian, they do have a piano player, a pianist, that comes in here and plays the piano occasionally. Some photo pass photographers doing photos all around over there. All right, enough looking around the lobby. Let's go to Gasparilla. So in order to get to Gasparilla, we're passing, so we just kind of went to the back of the lobby here. The front entrance was over there. We're passing by Sandy Cove Gifts and Sundries. We're heading toward Grand Floridian Cafe, and we're gonna go outside and make a left over to Gasparilla Island Grill. They did recently just redo all of these rooms over here to be DVC rooms. And it looks like they are redoing this tower too. I don't think they're turning these into DVC rooms, but they are redoing that tower. So there is some construction going on at the Grand Floridian right now. I do like what they're doing though, because as you can see over here, they just redid this building and they didn't add glass to this stairwell over here, but they are adding glass to this one which will make it very nice on a rainy day. You won't have to worry about going up the stairs in the rain. Oh, lucky for me, there's a sign out here that tells me where Gasparilla Island Grill is. I don't really understand why they blocked off this walkway. Like you can walk out there. You just can't go out right here, but it's okay. We don't need to go out there because we're headed over to, oh, and they're doing a lot of construction on this tower over here too. A lot of work happening at the Grand Floridian right now. We're still headed this way. I'm gonna go out to the front of it here to give you guys kind of like a, a view into Gasparilla. Captain Shipyard Marina. If you rent a pontoon boat, this is where you would come to load into it. Right here. Yeah, there's a lot of construction going on. Ooh, this whole tower, painting that one over there, working on this one. Wow. So there it is right there, Gasparilla Island Grill. That's where we're headed to to get our first treats. We're going to pick up two of them. Also over here is the arcade. And if you continue to walk that way, there is a walkway that will take you all the way over to Magic Kingdom. This is nice. Some nice shaded tables over here being shaded in the late afternoon. 
or the early afternoon by this large building that is the Grand Floridian. And it feels very nice outside right now. It is 84 degrees, but there's a breeze blowing and it's beautiful under here. All right, we're heading in to see what we can get. All right, so the first thing that we have is the Jack-O-Lantern Mickey Cake Pop, Jumbo Pumpkin Spiced Yellow Cake Pop enrobed in orange colored white chocolate. And this was pretty expensive, it was $8.99. And the second thing that we have is the Bewitching Mini Cupcake, chocolate cupcake topped with chocolate cream sandwich cookies for ears, an edible witch hat, and Halloween sprinkles. And this was $6.49. I'm pretty excited to try both of these. I think I'm gonna probably like the cupcake more. Here is the cross section of the pumpkin spice cake pop. This thing was much larger than I thought it was gonna be. Like you can get an idea of the scale with this. This is a jumbo straw sticking through the top of it. It is pretty huge. So another thing that I should mention is if you're looking to take photos of these, my ear actually fell off, not my ear, Mickey's ear actually fell off first. And then when I cut it in half, both ended up falling off. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was with the mini cupcake, I took the wrapper off and something that they didn't really advertise with the like description of it is that it is cookies and cookies and cream icing and it even goes down into the cupcake a little bit. So you're getting more icing than cupcake. So interested to try that one. Let's give them both a try. All right, so I think I'm gonna try the pumpkin spice cake pop first. I moved as far away from these speakers as possible. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing that. It's a very dense looking cake, like the actual the consistency of it looks very, very dense. Pretty good. It is a pumpkin spice cake, so it tastes like a pumpkin pie. It's not as creamy as a pumpkin pie, because a pumpkin pie would be, of course, pumpkin pie filling. But if you could turn that pumpkin pie filling into a cake, this would be it. And it is amazing. Like, there are some pumpkin pie things that I am not a fan of. There's like too much cinnamon in them. This one, perfect amount of cinnamon, perfect amount of pumpkin, perfect amount of flavor. The orange doesn't have a flavor to it. It's kind of, it's, it is a white chocolate, so it's not like overpowering or anything like that. This is great. It's not dry, it's nice and moist, and it's big enough to share. I know that it was expensive, but big enough to share. So this one's kind of a home run in my book. The other news is if you miss it during these three days, you can always get it during the Halloween season. So this will be available during the Halloween season. Hmm. Oh, great. I love it. All right, now I'm gonna try the cupcake. And there's a lot going on with this cupcake. There is the, like the chocolate cupcake itself. There's sprinkles on it. There's the cookies and cream icing. And then there's a chocolate coating on the top of it. Almost like a magic shell. Kind of like drizzled over the top of it. This, this has pretty much everything in it except for the Oreos. It's always funny that in like the advertisements, they don't call them by name, Oreos. But like when you look at them, it just says Oreo on the cookie. So these are Oreo cookies. They're not like Hydrox or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with Hydrox, but they are Oreo brand. Whoa, that's delicious. Super chocolatey, and then cookies and creamy. Wow, moist cake. Oh man, both of these things. I'm gonna just try the cake now on this chocolate cake. No, oh, I mean, it's good, but the cookies and cream icing or frosting, what, are, what do you wanna call it? Icing or frosting on the top with the chocolate coating on it. That's delicious. And the sprinkles. Man, I'm in love with both of these things. I can't wait to try the rest of the treats around the monorail beam. All right. I'm gonna finish these off and then we'll get on the monorail and we'll head over to, which way does the monorail go? That way, Contemporary. So we're heading to Contemporary next. Before we leave, I did want to point out that the Oreos on top, I, I, I have this, it's not an issue, it's just like this happens with every baked good that uses another baked good on it. The Oreos are, they're, they're soggy, they're like stale. Not as crunchy as an Oreo would be straight out of the bag because they've been sitting on top of this like oily uh, frosting, soaking it up. It still tastes like Oreos, but you know, just be prepared. You're not gonna get the same crunch out of it. One of these days, I'm gonna have to check out this Go Flow party. Also, this isn't a bad spot to watch the fireworks, is it? I feel like they'd be a little bit off to the side of the castle over here, but you can still see them pretty nicely. And now for us, we are headed to the monorail to catch a monorail over to the next resort. I got some more treats to try. There he is, he's playing the piano. up to the second floor right there. Catch a monorail. So we made it up to the second floor and we're gonna be going out to the monorail here. But I wanted to point out, Basin is back open, but the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique never reopened here at the Grand Floridian. Big sign on the outside says, sorry, we're closed. Moose out front should have told you. Perfect timing, the monorail is just now pulling up and we're gonna be headed over to the Contemporary. Riding our monorail, Blue. Ooh. Make, making fun noises here. 
Wow. There used to be a boat that you could rent at the Grand Floridian that was called Grand One. It was a larger yacht type vessel that you could take out on seven seas and uh, actually they would pilot it for you and you could watch the fireworks from it. But since the pandemic, it has not returned. Quick stop at Magic Kingdom before heading over to the Contemporary. All right, here we are at the Contemporary. Headed down to Contempo Cafe. Get another treat. We came down the escalator and now we are in the Grand Canyon Concourse. That's what the name of this is right here. Mostly because of this Mary Blair right here is reminiscent of, of the Grand Canyon. I'm gonna stop into BVG really quick, see if there's anything interesting going on in there. Got some Disney 100 stuff. Nothing that we haven't seen before. We got the Disney Decades Collection. The three Caballeros ears, these are amazing. And this one is Snow White down here. Not really that exciting, but these are super fun. I always find it interesting, the stuff that you can find in some of these shops, like they have Tommy Bahama stuff, they have Vineyard Vine stuff that's not uh, like Disney branded, but some of it is Disney branded. Like this is a Tommy Bahama Disney Park shirt. You can see Mickey there. This is a Nike Mickey hat. This is a Lily Pulitzer Mickey print. Another Tommy Bahama one, but there is like Tommy Bahama prints that are not Disney at all. They're just here. Ooh, I haven't seen these ears before. They're like corduroy and denim. Amazing. How much fun are those? Like pink corduroy and denim. Like I said, I love some resort specific merch. Look at this retro looking lounge fly with the monorail handle on it. Ah, awesome. 50th anniversary contemporary resort. Amazing. How much is this? $75? Beautiful bowling shirt. The ears that go with it. These are great. You know, Christmas ornaments, mugs, artwork. Who could ask for anything more? Ooh. This is interesting. I'm scrolling through the mobile order at Contempo Cafe and I'm not seeing the cake that they have offered for halfway to Halloween. What's that green thing? Oh, pickle. That's not a cake. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'll have to walk over there and see if they actually have it. So we're walking past the Mary Blair elevator shaft. We're heading towards the Outer Rim Chef Mickey's in Contempo Cafe. Usually out in front of Contempo Cafe, they have a table with all of the offerings on it. Right now, it looks like we just got some things that are available upon request, but we're making our way up here to have a look. They do have the Donald Duck sipper. Or is it a popcorn bucket? It's very small for a popcorn bucket if it is a popcorn bucket. Let's go back and look. It is a sipper right there. That's where the straw is. Yeah. Very nice. I like how his head sticks out of it. Up at the registers, they do have it on display, the Madame Leota dark chocolate cake. Mini devil's food cake filled with dark chocolate ganache topped with chocolate glaze and marshmallow webs for $6.29. You can use the Disney dining plan if that existed. Although it wasn't on the mobile order menu, it is back here. There it is, the Madame Leota cake. Right inside of the snack options case. So this is the Madame Leota chocolate cake. Mini devil's food cake filled with dark chocolate ganache topped with chocolate glaze and marshmallow webs. And this was $6.29. And I did a cross section of it and holy macaroni, this thing is filled with the dark chocolate ganache. Like really filled. Take a look at the detail on this flower on the top. Simply amazing. I do have to admit though, the Madame Leota looks a little bit more like Dolly Parton than my traditional like view of Madame Leota. I think that this is from the comic books and that does make sense. But like she kind of looks like Dolly Parton, right? Let's give it a try. I feel like I'm going to be chocolated out by the end of this. The good news is we're only trying four treats today. Uh, and the last one is a lighter option. So we don't have to worry about it all being just like heavy chocolatey stuff. Although two of it, two of them are heavy chocolatey items. All right, let's see what we got here. Fantastic. So far, typical Disney cake, like a nice bright icing on the top with or frosting with uh, like a moist chocolatey cake. I'm gonna try some of this dark chocolate ganache that's in the center here. Very delicious. I like it so far. If you're a fan of chocolate cake, I think you will really, really enjoy this chocolate cake. I would not suggest doing what I'm doing. Is it just getting dark the whole time? Hold on. Okay, I switched sides of the table. Hopefully the lighting will be a little bit better. So if you're a fan of chocolate cake, I would definitely get this. I think you will love this. I would not suggest doing what I did and like 
going to all three of the resorts and trying them. I think this is more of like a, hey, we're here at Contemporary, let's get this chocolate cake type thing. And if you're a fan of Madame Leota and, you know, you have friends with you, maybe you could split it. It's good, but a lot of chocolate, a lot of heavy chocolate. This is a good cake. I'm gonna try some of the outside with these marshmallow webs here. Ooh, ooh, okay, could have been bad. Not getting a huge marshmallow flavor out of it, but overall the cake is fantastic. I would totally eat this again. After like a nice burger from Contempo Cafe, dig into one of these chocolate cakes. Hmm. Yeah, real nice. Ooh, the chocolate ganache in the center is so thick, I just dug into it and the entire center came out. Wow, I'm just gonna eat the whole center. This is delicious chocolate cake. Wow, it's the kind of chocolate cake that gives you like sugar goosebumps off the back of your head. I don't know, I recommend this one too. So far we're three for three in this video. Really good, really good stuff. All right, uh, gonna hop back on the monorail. Quick stop at Ticket and Transportation. We're not gonna get off the monorail, but then we're gonna head over to Polynesian for our last treat. Also, if you look at this mural, are you call it a mural or a mosaic, you'll see it does, is very reminiscent of, it's a small world. Same artist, Mary Blair. I love these bears, they're very cool. Making our way up the very, very skinny elevator to the monorail platform. I was hoping that, oh, there is, look at that. What a shot. The monorail coming in, that's the express monorail, so that's not the monorail that we're gonna get on. That's the one that's heading straight from the Ticket and Transportation Center to Magic Kingdom. Ooh, see they're moving again. So we're headed to the resort line, which will be heading the other way towards Polynesian Village Resort. That one right there. Also, this goat's got five legs. All right, we've made it over to the Polynesian Village Resort. It's a nice breezy day out here. The waterfalls are flowing, tropical breezes, a beautiful day. Let's go get us a Halloween treat. Oh man. Ooh, this resort feels so nice. It reminds me so much of Alani. And it feels good inside. Nice and cool. Island vibes. I love this. Let's go get a Dole Whip. So we are headed downstairs and out that back door right there. So just straight through from where the monorail got off, down the stairs and out the back door. This is my first time seeing the 100 Years of Wonder collectible medallions. You got Orange Bird, Ariel, Moana and Maui, and Stitch. As well as they have some Polynesian Village press pennies with Goofy and Donald and the Trader Sam's Tiki guy, Mickey and Minnie, Orange Bird, Mirabelle and Luisa and the guy we don't talk about. Moana and Maui and Stitch. We are headed out the back door to the Pineapple Lanai to get our treat. But as you can see, there is a line outside. And that is because they released a new tiki mug today. I'm gonna sneak around to the front of Trader Sam's to see if I can show you a picture of the sign. So they are doing it via wristband distribution. So you head back to Trader Sam's. I'm sure that you head to that line that we saw in order to get a wristband. So you come to Trader Sam's and you pick up a wristband and then you go get in line. But I wanted to give you guys some information about this. This is the Gargoyle Tiki Mug. It costs $80 whether you get the alcoholic drink or the non-alcoholic drink. And you're able to do two per guest. So you can buy two of them or you can buy one, but you still have about a two hour wait if you get the wristband right now and head out and wait in line. Also, I would give you a bit of advice for the Tiki Mug. I would show up at first wristband distribution and I would get a wristband, then I would leave. I would come back, they're handing out Tiki Mugs until midnight tonight. So. You get your wristband, leave, come back, go to the park, go anywhere you want to. Come back late at night, after 10. You don't have to wait in any lines. But from what I've heard, I've never done it, but everybody that I've talked to is like, yeah, the lines are nothing after 10 o'clock at night. Even the cast members were saying that. So that would be my plan. So I know that some of you all may not be familiar with the layout of the Polynesian, but basically this line over here is for the Tiki Mug and it stretches all the way past the pool all the way around this building to the backside and then over to the entrance to Trader Sam's. But look at us, pineapple lanai, no wait at all. Let's get us a Dole Whip. Here's where we're getting, halfway to Halloween, Kakamora Dole Whip. And the last treat that we're doing today is at the pineapple lanai, the Kakamora Dole Whip Waffle Bowl. Dole Whip pineapple served in a waffle bowl with Moana-inspired white chocolate disc 
and milk chocolate covered pretzel sticks. So I do want to point out, I flipped over my little disc there because I wasn't sure which way was up. Also, my Dole Whip is melting. It's not too hot out today either. But if you look at the picture that I took of the sign, that looks like a Kakamora. This looks like uh, something. Not this. It doesn't look anything like that. It's not bad, but it doesn't look like a Kakamora like this does. Also wanted to point out this was $5.99. And I feel like you can't go wrong with this. It's a Dole Whip. Like it's a pineapple Dole Whip. Yeah, it's great. It's a pineapple Dole Whip. There's nothing better. Hmm. So this is interesting because the Dole Whip itself is vegan. But now that we've added in the milk chocolate on the pretzels and the chocolate disc, it's not vegan anymore. Also, I wonder about the waffle ball. It's fantastic. Like, it's <laughs> fantastic on a hot day, fantastic on a cool day. I love it. It's also a nice light treat after eating all those chocolate things. One thing that I wanted to try was, you know how we talked about the Oreos being a little bit stale earlier? I wonder if these pretzels are stale. No, because they're stored separately. Fantastic. Yeah. This is great. Can't go wrong with it. Seeing the line from when I bought my, my Dole Whip to now, it really hasn't moved very much. So we're actually gonna make our way over to have a look at the DVC building that they're building here at the Polynesian Resort before heading out. So on our way out, I passed by the wristband distribution again for the Tiki Mug, and they were all out of wristbands for the day. I was originally gonna grab one on my way past just so we had one for later for a friend of mine, but they were all out when I came back. I should have gotten it when I was standing there the first time. So here we are, we're coming up to, this is just past the Fiji building. This is as far as we can go in this area. Aside, if we go to the Aotero, Aotero section over here, I think I could probably walk down some of these paths here. No, I guess not, because that would be the rooms. And this is it. There we go. I did want to mention there is a sign here that says no photography or video recording, uh, but that is actually on the job site. Anywhere here in public area is totally allowed to be recorded from. Here we are just having a look at the, this is the new DVC tower that is coming to the Polynesian Village Resort. Just having a look at the, at the Polynesian DVC tower as we're passing by. And then on to the wedding pavilion. All right, so there you have it. That was our trip out to the three monorail beam resorts to try Disney's halfway to Halloween treats. They were all very good and got me pretty excited for Halloween. They did announce today that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is starting on August 11th this year and running through November 1st on select nights. So it's not every night, but it is throughout the season. One thing that was interesting about that is the November 1st date. Normally they would end on October 31st because November 1st is just a Wednesday. And I know that they do run parties on Wednesdays. That's a typical party day, but it's just uncommon for them to have it run all the way through November 1st. And we also found out that you can buy tickets beginning May 2nd, or if you are staying at a Disney resort during the Halloween season, during the party season, you can buy them on April 27th. So I need to find out if that means that like I could buy, so I'm staying in a Disney room during the Halloween season, but I'd like to go on the first night. I'm gonna find out if I can log in and buy them on the 27th for the first night even if I'm not staying in the hotel on that first night, I'm staying later in the season. It's a good question. Maybe a good little like hack for you guys out there. We'll give it a try and let you guys know if we're successful or not. We also found out the prices for Not So Scary this year and they vary wildly depending on when you go to the party. So like take for instance, October 31st, the price is $199 for adults or $189 for kids that is the, that are the ages of three through nine. And that is before tax. If you're an annual pass holder or DVC, you get $10, $10 off your ticket. Uh, but that do, it goes down to say on August 15th, it is $109 for adults and $99 for children ages three through nine. Uh, so yeah, it varies wildly. Uh, we also found it's the same as it's been in years past where you can get into the park at four o'clock, but the party doesn't usually start until around seven o'clock at night. The other thing that was interesting is that Tron will be open for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And we found out you're still gonna have to use a virtual queue to get on Tron. I don't know how that is going to work because they wouldn't be able to do a one o'clock drop for that. I guess they would do a six o'clock drop for those party guests that are trying to get on Tron that night. I don't know, interesting things that we still, like little 
tidbits about the party that we have to learn as the party comes closer or during the party. So all in all, it was a fantastic day. Really enjoyed the treats, enjoyed my, making my way around the monorail resorts and just hanging out in this area. It was a great. Uh, another thing to note is that aside from the cost of the treats, this was a free day. We could have parked at say Disney Springs, taken a bus over to Contemporary or Polynesian or Grand Floridian, gone around the monorail, gotten some treats, taken a bus back to Disney Springs. That's free parking at Disney Springs. It was a great day, a one, fun way to spend an afternoon. So all in all, it was a fantastic day. With that being said, we are off. We'll see y'all tomorrow. We're the Christiansons from Rockland, Massachusetts. And, and now, now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.